What kills banking systems is the long tail. And we're seeing here the long tail. We've dealt with the 70 billion of the large developers, and that's the you know, low-hanging fruit. But if we don't fix the transmission mechanism, which effectively is what we're doing here, then it doesn't matter if we've got uh, borrowers who are you know, simply discouraged from going and borrowing or not. So of the three solutions that Jerry has put forward in effect, which is new banks, new entrants, or the present situation cleaning up, uh, which of these is going to be the most effective? Because neither of them, at the, well, two aren't happening, and one is happening at a glacial pace. If you completely blue sky it and you talk about a, um, a new bank, which is what Jerry was putting forward, you need new money, yeah? And Ireland as a uh, venture at the moment is not... Uh, and for, we can talk about the reasons, is it... Consumer, is it consumer and business confidence? It's a brave man or woman that goes out to start a new business at the best of times. It's an even braver person in today's economy that will take on a lot of debt with that. It's a brave banker that will lend into that. Banks are holding on to their capital to deal with the crystallization of, and that's the zombie issue that Jerry's talking about there. You know, so. Um, Ireland as a prospect at the moment is not a very uh, attractive prospect for a new bank. It's an attractive prospect for, for hedge funds coming in and buying it at, at rock bottom prices and, and taking a, a punt. But for a bank and the kind of infrastructure that a bank would require, it's expensive, it's, uh, it's slow, people don't switch. We've seen with Ulster Bank during the summer last year, we. Uh, the actual number of switches of account, even after being that inconvenienced for three weeks or whatever and not being able to access your money or pay your bills, people still didn't switch. So it's not a new entrant isn't an easy thing. There's quite significant barriers to entry. Um, and the biggest single barrier to entry at the moment, in my view, is capital and funding. And without those two, uh, um, you haven't got a bank. So. I'm a pragmatist. If I haven't got uh, capital and I haven't got, if I haven't new money and I haven't new funding, then what have we got? Well, we have the existing domestic retail banks and we have to get uh, cleaning them up. And that uh, speech you referred to last October, some six or seven months ago, was about saying, come on, let's, let's get on with it. These are real losses. They're right in front of us. We need to make progress in dealing with them in the absence of new money or new funding. Hand it to Jerry from there. Um, but it's not obvious that if there were laws in place that made it relatively simple legally to open a new bank, that somebody wouldn't. That the hedge funds wouldn't say, hmm, why should I invest in one of these existing banks when I can start fresh? And they might well. I'm not saying they would. I'm just saying it's not obvious they wouldn't. And it's certainly not the case that you necessarily have to rely just on local capital. But you certainly have lots of local bankers who are currently unemployed, no doubt. Mm -hmm. so, so in that sense, it's and actually in the U.S., it's actually the case that a lot of the banks that are started are started by bankers who used to work for some other bank. Um, and they raise the capital one way or another. There's a lot of these banks. I was talking to some of these bankers actually earlier this week. You know. And it's a different kind of business, actually. It's actually more geared to lending to small businesses because it's very local, as opposed to trying to be an international institution or anything else. Um, there is an issue that arises about this SME lending, especially when it comes to new businesses. You know, you were talking about, well, you decided you just finance it off your credit card. In the US, most small businesses are financed by credit cards. That's actually how people borrow to start businesses. They just get credit cards and they run up big credit card bills and they hope it all works out. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we'd be encouraging that or anything, yeah. Every country in Europe that is experiencing the crisis is talking the same story. We need to get back lending. Ireland has a population of just over 4 million. The UK have 70 million. Uh, if the UK can't fix it, there's probably a light chance that we can will struggle to fix it. I mean, I don't hear any creative solutions other than we need to get back lending. Is there anything else out there? I mean, if we look at the case of, you know, Iceland. Iceland took a different approach to try and get themselves out of this uh, crisis. What have they done? Are they talking about we need to get back lending? 
Cyprus, do we need to encourage the Russian mafia to invest so we can tax them? <laughs> Businesses are not, what we talked about today, are not actually weighing up the market potential for their product. You know, there isn't enough customers there maybe to buy their product. Uh, so lending is just, again, another band-aid to maybe drag it on. But we have a small market. We're only 4 million odd people. But is there something else creative we can think about? Um, I just maybe just start off on the business side of things. Um, first of all, just I, I suppose I think it's important just to draw a, a differential between ourselves and Iceland, and just point out the fact that they had their own currency, which allowed them a greater degree of flexibility. Um, but on, on the on the other side, the creative side, I'm out, I have I'm now looking at an innovation partnership. I've gone to um, things like uh, Erasmus Entrepreneur. Um, Enterprise Europe Network, I've, I've looked at an awful lot of other European funding elements um, and I've also looked to get an awful lot of mentoring from people who had gone the road ahead so that they could tell me about the road back. So in terms of the creative solutions, um, I'm, I'm wondering whether your question is on, a, is on a macro level or whether you're simply focusing specifically on finance or just how we can do things better. Uh, just how we can do things better because I think on the, the macro level, as you say, I mean, these are just business problems, you, but you know, you must sell. But it really is the, big, it's the bigger issue. It's the same. Every country, just listen to the news, get it translated from French. Everybody is the same story. Just probably following on on the last question. And I mean, we're dealing with the psyche of people. And when we get away from the figures and we get away from everything else, it's about perception. It's about people. And I think the country is a bit like Pandora's box, where we've let loose all the troubles of the world on top of the country. And we tend to be pessimistic about that. So as my question is, I suppose, and Susan has alluded a small bit to it, you know, is where's the hope? You know, at the end of the day, we're dealing with people. You know, when you look at the figures, you look at all the negativity, all we're getting is negativity, negativity, there's more and more. So I suppose my question to the panel is, where's the hope? My, uh, my answer to that would be the, f the best lift I got was the census. I remember, you, know, you work in the central bank and it's always... Um, doom and gloom, like we're paid to see storm clouds uh, uh, gathering on the horizon. That's the job, you know, you're supposed to be the, uh, the watchdog. The, the census is the good news, I think. The, the, the rising population, the number of children, the number of young people, and finding a way to make sure that they have... Now, that's long, long term to the previous uh, gentleman's question, but that's where the good news for the country is.